Hello, everybody. I have Rachel with me today, otherwise known as Ribeye Rach. Uh, do you have any other aliases, Rach? Uh, I I guess I, I do have, I guess, just Rachel Elizabeth, but just Ribeye Rach is, is the main one right now. So if you guys are unfamiliar with Rachel, uh, she's appeared on my podcast before a few months back, I believe. And she's kind of like known as the, the sort of the Tom Hanks of the carnivore world. Everybody loves her. There's no one that doesn't like Rachel because she's a very sweet girl. She's very nice. She has an amazing story. And uh, I'm always so happy to speak with her. And I really appreciate you coming on today. Um, Rachel, so I've, I've been following you pretty closely. And we've been speaking back and forth. And I think everybody's seen some, some really big improvements with you. You know, like I just, I could just tell by looking at you. Um, and what's, what's going right in your life right now? What's changed? <laughs> yeah, well, first of all, thanks for having me. I'm really happy to be back. But as for improvements and changes and how things are going, I mean, I've just seen a lot of progress in the last six months or so, I would say. I don't know when, the, when was the last time I was on probably January, February. Yeah, um, man, yeah, it was it was probably a while back. Yeah, something like that, maybe December, January. Yeah. So I, I've seen so much progress and I'm super thankful. I a couple months ago I walked a mile for the first time in over five years. And yesterday I walked over two and a half miles. So wow. that was exciting. Um and yeah I just have really been able to start to be able to go out and enjoy life a little bit more. And I would say even at that point that I talked to you earlier this year, I was still only able to be out of bed for maybe like three to four hours a day, which was an improvement at that time for sure. But obviously like that's still pretty severely disabled. And yeah. so at this point, I really don't have to spend much time at all in the in the daytime in bed. Um, if I go out and do something that's a little bit more takes more energy, then I might have to rest for a few hours. But other than that, um, I'm able to be out and about doing low energy things. I, I'm not to the point where I, you know, I would say I'm healthy or I'm healed but i've made so much progress and yeah i'm just really thankful for that and excited for more progress to come so so okay um so i'm just curious so you were bed bound a lot of that time when you were sick okay so how, how long was that for i would say when i was i was truly bed bound was probably about six months, but then I would say a few years where it was like, okay, I can be out of bed for like an hour or two, and then I'll be in bed for days afterwards, if that makes sense. So pretty much bed bound. Okay. And um so, and, and and what what caused you to be bed bound? Like yeah, what were you suffering it, with that caused you to be bed bound? Me, so severe fatigue and then I would get like if I tried to sit up and do things I would get these crashes where I would get super bad muscle aches all over my body like throbbing and I was very sensitive to sound and light so if I was in a bad flare-up even just like hearing the dishes in the sink a couple rooms over could just like cause really serious physical pain. And I think that's something that's really hard to explain to people that haven't experienced it. But yeah, just like my limbs felt like lead. Like I felt like just moving, just walking, just rolling over in bed at all. Just, it felt like impossible sometimes. And so that's, that's really what kept me in bed was just that, that crippling fatigue, as well as some pretty serious neurological symptoms. Okay. So like, uh, you know, just from my own experience, like you had sensitivity to like outdoor light and yeah. stuff you know, like the sun. And uh, did you have any, like, did you have a lot of like mental symptoms, like anxiety or brain fog or anything like that? 
I, I had pretty significant brain fog for a while there. I just, I couldn't really like process reading a book. Um, listening to an audio book was just like, I don't know, it just kind of go in one ear and out the other. I just, I couldn't process that very well. But um, as for anxiety and depression, I, I didn't really have significant anxiety until I kind of hit my worst point in my chronic illness journey where I was just having these like non-epileptic seizure episodes and um, I was, I would just have like uncontrollable shaking dystonias just of my limbs and it constantly felt like I was in an emergency. Like if anybody healthy would have been in my body, they would have immediately gone to the emergency room. And to live like that 24 seven is just unbearable. Yeah. Like, yeah. and yeah. so that's, once that went on for a while, I really. So, sorry, Rachel, you're cutting out a little bit. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Is it any better? You or... cut out, you completely cut out there for about 20 seconds. Uh, um, can you can you just back up there for a, a story after I ask that question? <coughs> Sorry guys, we're having technical difficulties. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, good. I just switched my internet. So I think I think okay. we should be. <laughs> Sorry, do you mind back yeah. seconds? Yeah, where were we? Hey, I'm I'm no I have terrible brain fog, so I don't remember anything. Uh oh. Yeah, I think we were just talking about when I was at my worst and I was having these non-epileptic seizure episodes, dystonias where like my entire body would just flail all the time. I had super severe nerve pain over like my all the way down my arms and my legs and it, yeah like we had talked about it just was it was unbearable to live that way like if a healthy person had been in my body at any point in time during that portion of my journey they would have gone to the er just like that um what? I always say that on my videos. I'm like, even on my best days, most people would be in the emergency room. <laughs> yeah. And that's a crazy thing, like to, to endure that much physically and to have that be a constant thing. And I think, well, I think we were talking about anxiety before we got cut off there, but it wasn't a big issue for me until I started having those constantly emergent episodes. And I just felt so unsafe in my body. Like just, I, I just felt like I couldn't trust my body. I felt like nobody could help me. It's like, I would go to the hospital and they didn't know what to do with me. They didn't know how to help me. And a lot of times they would make me worse. And so that was traumatizing. And, um, to feel like you were in an emergency, but nobody could help you. I mean, that's just, that's an unbearable way to live. And I know that that's something that you've experienced in your journey too, and can relate to that, but it's not something that many people can relate to. Yeah. So almost hopeless yeah. in a way. It's like, there's nothing that I could, you know, sometimes it's, it's not true, but it, a lot of times you might feel like there's nothing you could do. Right. Yeah. It's <laughs> that like desperation where you're just completely desperate for yeah. any sort of relief. And that's when you start signing up for expensive programs and supplements and stuff, right? Um, so yeah, you're willing to try anything. Okay, so let's cut forward now. <clears throat> We're present day Rachel. So what do you think it is? So, okay, so what did you change? And what do you think it is that made you see the biggest changes? And how long did that take? <clears throat> Okay, let's see. So a couple of years ago, I started to 
realized that the Western medicine route was not bringing me relief. It was not bringing me healing and progress in my chronic illness journey. So I really pivoted and started to look for alternative things. And that's how I was diagnosed with Lyme disease. I did a year and a half of treatment for Lyme disease. And I think that might've saved my life. Like I think it's, it, but it just helped just a little bit. You know, I was like, I was brought to the bed bound phase or out of the bed bound phase to, you know, oh, I could be out of bed on a good day for an hour or two. And so I, that, I mean, that's not a way to live either. <coughs> and so I started realizing that my progress with that was slowing. So I stopped the Lyme disease treatment and I, um, started looking at other methods of healing. I became interested in the idea of neuroplasticity, of mindset work, meditation, the mind body connection for healing at that point. But I, that I was at that point, it was kind of just planting seeds. I was looking into it, but I, I hadn't fully dove in. And around that time, I found the carnivore diet, and that was last summer. So it's almost been a year that I've been doing the carnivore diet. And um, I, I jumped into that. And at the time, I wasn't even able to cook for myself. I, um, I just didn't want things to become worse. That was my only concern. And um, the first few months of the carnivore diet were pretty rough. Like it was a rough transition phase. And I know we've talked about this before, but a lot of people in the carnivore community sort of like to say, do carnivore for 30 days and it will heal you of absolutely everything. And we both know that that is not true for everyone and not true for many people, especially with severe chronic issues. Yeah. Um, and so I, 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 I had case for everybody. Yeah. For everybody I've talked to that's actually severely ill. Like I've talked to some people that say, oh, I have some eczema or something and it completely cleared up after a few weeks. But usually when people are bed bound like that, you don't just miraculously heal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not just going to be like back to normal life in 30 yeah. days. There's no way. Um, but yeah, so the first few months were pretty rough with all sorts of um, blood sugar issues and digestion issues, whatnot. And then after that, I started to see just like little bits of improvement where, you know, I could go out and do maybe something every day. And the, those severe fatigue crashes that I was having were not as bad. And it was just kind of a very gradual thing where like, when I looked back, I was like, oh, I really am improving, even though I still feel miserable all the time. Um, and so I would say by about six months, I, you know, felt like I was significantly improved, but still severely ill. Um, and it's kind of a funny thing when, you know, you've come from such a low place of like, mm -hmm. you know, just almost to the brink of death there. And then every, you know, there's so many levels and layers of improvement and, um, people get excited for you, but they're, but then you're kind of like, well, I'm still miserable. You know, I still have all these symptoms, even though I can do some more things and function a little better. Um, so at that point, I really started to look into brain retraining and, neuroplastic work and I read some books and a lot of listened to a lot of podcasts and just became really interested in a program called DNRS and I've been doing that for four months now so DNRS is a brain retraining program where basically they use concepts of neuroplasticity which is the brain's ability to change to help people to heal from chronic illness. So when people are chronically ill, they're stuck in a survival state, like that fight or flight. And when your nervous system is stuck in that state, it's almost impossible to heal. And so I started to realize that, you know, any diet you did couldn't necessarily completely address that. And so um, I could be eating the cleanest possible way and still be sick if my nervous system was stuck in fight or flight. 
because your nervous system governs your digestive system, your endocrine system, your cardio cardiovascular system. It regulates your breathing and your heart rate and your blood pressure. And when you think about all those systems that it impacts, then you kind of start to realize, okay, this might be really important. And another one that I didn't mention is the immune system. And obviously with chronic illness, the immune system is very involved and the gut as well. And so I started to become very interested in that and decided to go all in with that program about four months ago. And within the first few weeks, I noticed a huge shift in my mindset, but also in my healing. Um, and sorry, before so, you, before you, did you change anything else in that time frame? just so we could sort of differentiate if like, if you were trying a bunch of other things at that time frame, and how do we know? Exactly yeah, what this is one of the hardest questions because, you know, I feel like I'm doing so many things to try to heal that it really can be difficult to pinpoint what improvement came from what, um, diets, you know, brain retraining, well, in that, in that, exact, all those in that exact time frame though, did you see no. any other I, So I guess backing up a little bit, a couple months before that, I sort of, this might sound a little bit cheesy, but I came to this realization that I could fully heal. And for years, I kind of had accepted that I would always be sick forever and that I was just trying to fight for the best possible quality of life that I could have given my chronic illness. And I think that mindset was really ingrained in me by doctors um, and just them telling me that I had incurable genetic diseases, that, you know, we just had to manage this as best as possible and manage your symptoms as best as possible. And at first I didn't want to believe that I wanted to believe, okay, I was healthy before this. Like, why can't I get back there? But as time went on and I didn't get better and I was trying all these things, I kind of started to believe that, that I wouldn't get better, that I would maybe, you know, improve my quality of life as much as I could, but that I would always be sick. Yeah. And I just had this kind of light bulb moment where I was like, no, I can, I can heal. Like I can fully recover from all my illnesses and I can go back to living a normal life. And, um, that realization for me was a big shift. And at that time, I, bef the couple months before I started the brain retraining program, I had started to implement some of the things that I was learning as I was reading books about neuroplasticity and brain retraining. And, uh, so for example, I would meditate and that would help. I would do grounding, which is where you just like, I don't know, have your bare feet on the earth um, and just spend time in nature, trying to calm my nervous system down. I would do visualizations, which is a big part of DNRS and other similar brain retraining programs. And the idea with visualizations is that your brain doesn't know the difference between visualizing something and reality. And so that can be a really powerful tool for healing. And so I had kind of started like in my own way to implement those things and to have that change of mindset and to really consciously try to not think about symptoms and to kind of like redirect patterns of grief. And um, I guess just do things to elevate my state of emotion, I guess you could say. But all of those things did make a difference in that time, like leading up to when I started DNRS. So, but you didn't start any new drugs or supplements or anything like that during that time that could have also made those changes for you. Okay. I just like to talk about that because sometimes I'll ask somebody, okay, I'm doing this new program. I've seen all these improvements, but I'm also taking like 10 different supplements. I'm doing this. I'm 
taking a new prescription. Yeah. Like, well, how do you know what's working then? If you, right. So I, I just, know it. You know, it's so hard. Yeah. But for the most part, that's, I mean, that was okay. by far the biggest thing. And okay. I, I haven't been, I've been off of prescription medications for, um, I don't know, maybe four or five, six months now. So. Okay. And so with the DNRS, okay, so you start, you start doing it and you go into it. I'm, I'm assuming you probably have high hopes going into it. Otherwise you probably wouldn't be doing it. Um, yeah. But can you tell us a little bit as to, <laughs> you know, I don't want to get sued for copyright infringement here, but um, can you tell us a little bit as to like how you would start something like that? Like what sort of type of stuff you would do starting out and, and how it progresses? Yeah, definitely. So basically what it is, is a, I guess you could call it a course, like a training course. And so the way you start it is what they call brain boot camp, and they just have a series of videos. I think it's like 14 hours worth of videos, and they want you to sort of dedicate several days to go through those videos at a certain pace. And if you're not able to watch that much of the training in one day, then you could just spread it out over a longer amount of time. But Basically, you go through that and then you they they want you to do an hour of what they call practice a day. And so most of what that entails is visualizations of when you were healthy in the past. If you were never healthy, then you can just come up with something that's, um, you know, come up with a, a idea of what that would have looked like and then visualizations of in that are in the future of you being healthy and so you go through a step a series of steps for the brain retraining before you start those visualizations and they're in like 15 minute in increments and so you do four of those a day so typically i do 30 minutes in the morning and 30 minutes in the evening you can kind of just break it up however you want to. Um, and they want you to do that hour a day for six months. Um, but I've heard from other sort of experts in this realm that really doing a year of rewiring will bring kind of a whole new level of healing and help those neuroplastic changes to really stick. And so it, it just depends. Some people do six months and they feel like they're doing great and don't need to continue. But I think more often than not, sometimes people will have to go to a year or two years and um, to really see the most benefits from it. But aside from the hour of mostly visualizations a day, they want you to really make a big mindset shift. So sort of taking the pathways of the past, which are, you know, body scanning for symptoms or patterns of grief in regards to your illness and what you've lost or um, almost, I don't know if you've ever done this, but like, like planning, like, okay, you know, when I stand up, I know that I'm going to have this reaction. So I have to make sure I have a place to sit down so I don't pass out or whatever it is. Like, like I know that eating this food will cause me to have this reaction. So I'm going to avoid it. Um, and just changing those pathways of the past and your mindset in regards to them and pushing all of your thoughts away from symptoms, away from um, just anything in relation to chronic illness and just redirecting those, redirecting those thoughts. And what was interesting for me was that I always felt like I was a pretty positive person and that I had a, a good outlook on my illness. So I, for a long time, I really didn't know if a program like this could help me. But as I went into it, I really started to realize like, oh, okay, you know, like if I see my climbing shoes in a box in the closet, that triggers grief in me that triggers this reaction of like oh that was my old life and I feel you know 
so sad that that was taken away from me. And so just like reframing those thoughts. So now when I see things like that, I change those thoughts to, I have so many great memories climbing in the past and I'm going to, I'm going to get better and I'm going to be able to do that again and enjoy it again. So just like reframing those negative thought patterns is a big, a big part of the program. And then I guess letting go of limiting beliefs. So kind of like I talked about when I had that shift of starting to believe I could fully recover and fully heal letting go of those limiting beliefs surrounding your illness can make quite a big impact on healing. And so that's been another big thing as well. What about, so touching on, on the sort of the aspect of like gratitude. Okay. Um, yeah. What, how I'm really trying to frame my illness right now um, in terms of just being chronically ill, um, is, you know, we, we've gone, both gone through a lot of suffering over the years, right? And it's been devastating. And it, like you mentioned, I really resonate with you saying that uh, you had this past life and you had so much grief over the, the loss of that past life and just longing for it, you know, and it causes so much sadness. But, you know, the thing is when I, when I speak to you now, okay. And there's no right or wrong answer for this. Um, but you know, just, just to put it bluntly, would you, would you take any of this back? Because look, I'm speaking to ribeye Rachel right now. Okay. This person, had you not gone through all the crap you've gone through in your life, we wouldn't be sitting here right now talking. This person that's right. in front of me right now, this person that's in front of me right now wouldn't exist. It would be you, but it'd be a, a different version of you in your body, right? Um, so given that and seeing that you've improved, um, again, there's no right or wrong answer, but um, you know, if you could, would you go back in a time machine and and have changed things before your illness? I know that's a very loaded question, but I'm just, I'm just curious. I wouldn't, to be honest. I mean, it, it would be tempting, but yeah. I, I think that I went through all of this for a reason. And I really try to hold on to that belief. And my faith has helped me a lot with that. And just like, feeling that God has meant me to, or meant for me to go through the, these things. And even if it's just for the purpose of like showing other people that there's a way to heal from chronic illness or giving them hope in a hard time, like that, that makes it worth it. And yeah, I, I mean, obviously it would have been nice to be able to kind of bypass some of the, the worst moments, but I think that that's helped to just give me a deeper appreciation for life and just, yeah, like even when I'm doing boring things around the house, like doing the dishes or helping clean up, now I can do that and I couldn't before. And that to me is exciting and it's a blessing. And I, I hope that I can keep that perspective and to always remember like, where I used to be and just like being given a second chance at life is, is a gift. And I, I hope that I don't take that for granted in the future. Um, so I think it, it's given me a whole new perspective. And even when I'm healed, I'll be able to sympathize with people that are going through these things and hopefully like show them that it's possible to recover. Yeah. And do you think that, that sort of changing your perception of that illness with that form of gratitude for all the strength that that suffering has brought you, do you think that that is sort of a bit of a game changer in itself in terms of healing? Yeah, it's definitely, I think gratitude is, is super powerful. I don't think that it is 
going to heal people alone unless you're like the most amazing grateful person ever but um I think for most people it will just kind of be like a piece of the puzzle for them but I, I think it's it's good to have that mindset because it I know there is like I've been thinking about this a lot as I've started the brain tra retraining is after that point I kind of just started sharing only the victories and only the positive things and it's I don't want to paint this picture that healing is easy and yeah. so there's kind of that weird line there where, um, you know, you want to be real, but you also, it, it's, it's important to physical healing to have that positive mindset and to redirect your thoughts surrounding illness. And so, um, yeah, I've just kind of <laughs> been wrestling with that. As I, saw your, I've shared my I saw your post on Instagram and you said, you know, um, where you explain exactly that you're like, guys, you know, I don't want to have this sort of, you know, some people might call it like toxic positivity, right? Where everything is just glorious and every day you just get better and better and there's no struggles and yay carnivore yeah. kind of, which, which you do see quite a bit. And I think that's the thing that kind of bugs me a little bit about the carnivore community, you know, and I mean, any community really, right. Where it's like people who, you know, they, maybe they have something to benefit from making it seem so easy or something. Um, but you said in your post, you're like, you know, this is part of my training, right? I'm trying to change my perceptions on things. I'm not trying not to, you know, have any sort of negative self-talk. And I think that's really important. You know, I think it's important. Yeah. That, yeah. So For okay. sure. <laughs> it's something is like, that, sorry that, to interrupt you, but something I've noticed is like, it's, it, it is really hard to keep choosing the things that are going to help you to heal. That's, I've been thinking about that a lot because it's like, for me, even doing the visualizations every day has gotten harder as I've been able to do more. Cause I'm like, Oh, I don't want to do that. But every time I do it, it's just like, I notice the difference and I know that it's going to make a difference in my healing journey. And so like, <laughs> sometimes it's just hard. And sometimes you want to like, let yourself just go into sadness. And, um, I remember when I was on a trip a couple of weeks ago and I had really overdone it. And I, I was just like sobbing, laying in bed. And I was like, I don't want to do these stupid visualizations and be positive about it. Like, this is hard. And I just like started listening to a meditation and then started listening to past visualization recordings that I had done. And I was just crying through the whole thing, but like, I was still glad that I did it, you know? And so even just like in those worst moments, like really just pushing yourself to choose the thing that's going to help you to heal is always worth it, but it's hard. Like it's so hard. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I've been doing like some meditation classes. I, I was telling you before, uh, we hit record here that yesterday I was having an, an absolutely horrific day. Like I woke up, my heart was pounding and the light was like, you know, just sucking my soul out. Like I just hated the sun and, you know, I just yeah. was anxious and brain foggy and everything. And I did this meditation class and, and I went into it and in previous classes, I think I, I didn't go into it with the perception that it was really, I was like, I'm going to do it, just try it but I'm not really going to like, and I'm not like really invested in, I didn't really think it was going to help. And, um, I told my meditation teacher that, and she goes, okay, let's try something different. And she just had me like meditate, but also tell myself something over and over and over and over and over again, the entire class. And I was like, this is crazy. And, uh, and doing breathing at the same time, really deep breathing. And when I came out of that class, I almost felt like, like drunk with like a different, I was like, whoa, I feel so different. This is weird. And it just, it blew my mind. I was like, this is like the power of the mind. You know, there's the nervous system is so, is such a fragile thing. And that your, your, your perceptions of things, your, your emotions, your every little thought that you have plays a role in how that, in how that manifests yeah. in symptoms, you know? Sure. 
So you're doing, so you're doing the DNRS. You're a few weeks into it. When did it really sort of hit you where you're like, whoa, this is like, what's going on here? Something's changing. Yeah. Uh, so I'm actually, I'm almost four months into it um, now. So it's been, it's been a little while, but I would say, honestly, because I had prepared so much, this is, this is just my style. Like before I did carnivore, I just researched like crazy for a month before doing it. And so I did the same thing with this. And so I already like was going into it, believing that this was going to work for me. And so really during those days of like going through the training and they did a really good job of explaining the science behind how our brain is able to help us to physically heal that it's not just a mental thing that our nervous system is if if we have a dysfunction in our nervous system it can cause all sorts of chronic illnesses and um just like disarray and and something that you know when people are chronically ill, often like they'll have one system of their body have symptoms. And then it's just kind of like a spiral where all these things go wrong. Oh. And so why is that, you know? And when you look at the nervous system, you're kind of like, oh yeah, that might be why all these things are going wrong. But anyway, um, within the first few weeks of, of doing the steps, doing the visualizations and all the things that they want you to do in the program, I walked to the mailbox for the first time, I think within the first week or two, which my mailbox is, it, we have a long driveway. So it's not like an, a typical driveway length, but it was probably a couple blocks, which was the longest I've gone in years. And then a week and you know, probably 10 days later to two weeks later, I walked an entire mile. And so it really, really has helped me with, I don't know if you're familiar with POTS or dysautonomia with the when you stand up and you have the tachycardia and the drop in blood pressure and get dizzy and pass out, like it helps me a lot with that. And so I'm able to stand and walk so much further than before, before it was just like, I couldn't do it. I couldn't push through it. And no matter what I told myself, like I couldn't. And I think POTS and dysautonomia with the tachycardia and the blood pressure issues and blood pooling, I feel like that is just screaming nervous system issues. And so I think it's, that's one thing that carnivore didn't help a lot with. Like I was still, you know, six months into carnivore, I was still needing to use a wheelchair to go through the airport. Or, you know, when we were, we spent a couple months in Florida earlier this year. And um, just to go on a, a little walk around the neighborhood, we had to use my wheelchair. You know, I was six, seven months into carnivore at that point. And I had improved a lot in a lot of ways, but the dysautonomia and the POTS is something that was really like, still just a huge issue for me. And then um, they also have a concept of inter, what is it, incremental training. And so um, basically you're, you're trying to very gently expose yourself to things that give you reactions. Like for people with histamine intolerance, like just like very slightly exposing yourself to something like, say, if you're cooking your, your meat from frozen, um, cooking it for a little bit longer or whatever it might be, something that won't like give you the craziest flair, but something that'll just like push you a little bit um, over your normal tolerance level. Um, and then after that, doing that, you would do the visualizations and those practices and just like signal safety to your brain. And so um, that has been something that has, been I've seen a huge difference in is my histamine reactions to food um I've been doing that incremental training with just like very slowly going from cooking my food to frozen to defrosting it and being fine when eating it um and so that's been another really big improvement and then I would say just yeah just the ability to do things um has increased a lot and I feel like you know somebody actually messaged me and they said, Oh, like you can eat whatever you want. Once you finish retraining your brain and, um, it'll be fine. Cause that's all you need to do. And a lot of people do heal just through doing brain retraining and not diet. So that just shows how powerful the brain is. But I think that in combination with nutrition and with neuroplastic work, that's just like a 
it's just a snowball effect. And it, I don't know. I, I just don't want to go back to the foods that made me sick. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't have a desire to do that. Like maybe I don't plan to be strict carnivore forever, but being animal-based and still getting in those nutrients that are going to make me as healthy as possible. Like I want to continue doing that. Okay. And do, you think, do you think you would, um, like, do you think that plant foods really did make you sick or do you think that, you know, uh, do you think that it, it's something that you might reintroduce at some point? Um, I wouldn't say plants like per se, but I would say ultra processed foods, seed oils, that sort of thing. Okay. Those are the things and excess sugar. I don't know that I ever would want to go back to sugar at all. Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to say anything definitely because things change, but yeah, I would say seed oil, sugar and processed foods are things I just don't have a desire to go back to right. at this point in time. As for plants, I think maybe some lower oxalates, vegetables or, you know, fruits, if I t do well with them, like I would be okay with adding those back in. Like I'm not, some carnivores are just like, oh, plants are evil and like never eat them. And I just, I just don't quite agree with that. Um, I think carnivore is amazing and a powerful way to eat, but, um, I think people can be healthy having some plant foods as well. Yeah. So, I don't know what you, what are your thoughts on that? As well, the carnivore I, well, I'm not carnivore anymore. Okay. <laughs> so, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very underweight. Okay. So I had a brain MRI a few weeks ago and it showed that I had some, um, shrinkage of my brain. So I have some brain damage. And I think it's because I just wasn't, when I was carnivore, I wasn't able to eat a lot, to be honest yeah. with you. I wasn't able to eat huge portions. And um, I definitely was not getting anywhere near my calorie intake that I should be. You know, when I hear people eating like four ribeyes a day, I'm like, oh, there's no way I'd be able to, like I, my stomach would blow up if I ate four ribeyes. Yeah. Uh, and I would have kidney pain and all sorts of issues. Um, so, so I was, I got really underweight and I, and I, you know, had the brain damage and everything. So I'm like, okay, well, screw the carnivore diet. I'm going back to plants. Um, so I'm actually on the GAPS diet now. And it seems oh, like God. loads of people are on the GAPS diet and they're healing with plant foods. They're, they're boiling yeah. the heck of their vegetables. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. And fermenting um, them. But so basically it's just like soups, right? So it's like uh, chicken stock, which yeah is what you do. I know in your diet, I've seen your posts, uh, you know, and it's very healing, right? It has a lot of good amino acids and it's a really good source of collagen and other things, nutrients. Um, and they're adding bone marrow, uh, in, in the soups. And then you'll typically add some safer, you know, lower anti-nutrient vegetables and boil it in the soups for like towards the end of the soup for like 20 minutes. And then uh, you go through stages, right? The next stage, you introduce like egg yolks. And the next stage, you introduce something else. Sorry. You're now, I don't, I don't always agree with, um, I don't agree with the sort of the more the end stage gap stuff or the later stage gap stuff where it's like, yeah. we start introducing like almond flour and, you know, like nuts and seeds and dark chocolate or whatever. And I'm, I'm like, no, no, I, I know better that that, or like rhubarb, you know, which is like people died from drinking rhubarb, right? So I'm like, no, there's no way I'm ever going to be going that into that version of gaps. And when I tell people that I'm gaps, I think that's where a lot of the criticism comes from. But, yeah. um, but the intro stages are totally different than that for sure. Yeah. Look, I did carnivore for over a year. It's not like I didn't give it a good college try. Um, yeah. I, I gave it a good try. Uh, it didn't work with my condition, unfortunately. I, was, I saw some major improvements in some areas and some areas I saw some worsening of my condition. And I would go through great ups and great downs. So I'm like, okay, it's not working for me. I need to change things up. But where I'm really interested in changing things up is in what you're doing. And I, this is something I've been interested in for a long time. And it's just, it's so coincidental that yesterday of all days, I had that that session, that simple, just hour long meditation session. And I felt the power of it. It was weird. I I've never been a believer in this stuff. I've never believed that meditation is ever going to help with anything. 
positive thoughts, all that stuff. I'm like, oh, it's just a bunch of hokey stuff, you know, but I felt it. I felt the power of it yesterday. I'm just like, man, I feel there's something changed just from that one session. And, um, and uh, it's so, it's such a, a nice coincidence having you on the channel today. I know we, we'd set this up a few days ago, but, um, but it's something that I've really looked into and I'm, I'm signed up for some limbic training. Um, I just signed up for the Gupta. I haven't had a chance. I just watched this sort of the intro video, which was pretty cheesy, but yeah. uh, you're doing the, so you started and you're still doing the Gupta program. Is that correct? So I'm still doing DNRS. Um, basically once you learn all the steps and all the things that you need to implement, you don't really need to go back to the training videos or anything. And so at about three months in, I decided I wanted to go through the Gupta training videos just to see if I could glean any more insight or add anything else that would help me from doing it. And so, I don't know, I just am interested in, in this. And so that's why I'm going through Gupta as well. I don't think it's necessary for people to do that at all. I just really find this stuff fascinating. So, so what that's is why I'm doing it. So the DNRS you started with, is there a, like a particular website where you would sign up for that? Yeah, I think it's retrainingthebrain.com and they have a lot of information on there and like testimonial videos. Honestly, one of the reasons why I chose DNRS over other programs is just, I felt like I could find more recovery stories and I just was going through YouTube and like watching people's recovery stories through it and their experience with it. Um, but I think it's just because it might be the most well-known brain retraining program, but that's not to say the other programs aren't just as good or even better in other ways. You know, I, I, I just, that's the one I, I chose and stuck with it. And obviously it's, it's worked out for you. Me, so, yeah. <laughs> and so have you met other people that this has also worked for as well? Yeah. I've talked to quite a few people that have seen huge changes with DNRS and something that. I just love to hear is when people have Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, EDS, and they just see improvements in healing because it's kind of one of those conditions where doctors make it sound like it's hopeless and that you're going to have it for the rest of your life and there's no cure. And just with people that have EDS, I've probably had a dozen people message me at least saying that it's been life-changing for them already. And yeah, I, because I, have EDS or had EDS, whatever you want to say. Um, I have a really big heart for those people. And so it's just cool to see that, but it's, it's cool that it's, it's so impactful for so many different conditions, physical conditions and mental conditions. And um, yeah, not just DNRS. Like I'm not touting DNRS saying you have to do it. I'm just yeah. sharing that you know the idea the principles behind it neuroplasticity is such a powerful thing and it's mm -hmm. yeah it's a powerful just, method for healing just to make it clear you're not, you're not you don't work for the company you're not associated with them like <laughs> so she doesn't <laughs> no, have an ulterior I, motive <laughs> no ulterior motives i'm totally like happy for people to do any brain retraining program or just take it up on their own if they can learn enough on their own you know it's that's that's just what I want for people. I'm, I'm just sharing my experience with DNRS specifically because that's what I've been doing. So, so if you could give any advice to somebody, say somebody's just starting off on their journey, say you're speaking to, uh, someone who's just like you, Rachel, uh, a few years ago, or, or even a year ago, uh, what, what would be the advice you'd be, you know, you'll give to them. They come to you say, Rachel, I'm really suffering. I can't get out of bed they're crying, I can't take care of my kids, you know, what, what would you sort of tell them? Okay, this is what you should probably take a look into. Would it just be DNRS or do you have any other advice? I would say, you know, DNRS would be a good thing to start with. And when I say DNRS, just any brain retraining program that you find would work for you. Um, and I think one of the key things is just believing that you can heal and, and almost just visualizing that and seeing that, you know, you can have a different future than what a doctor might tell you, or, um, you know, that you're, that you can heal from chronic illness, that it's possible. Um, there are so many voices saying that healing isn't possible. 
And I think especially within the chronic illness communities, you hear that a lot and it's kind of a hopeless place. And it's really sad because um, I think a lot of people are just misguided. And um, yeah, just, just believing that healing is possible and setting that as a goal. And also remembering that it's not going to be easy. Sometimes things can get worse before they get better. Sometimes it can be really, really slow progress. You have to look back and see the difference. Um, and yeah, and everybody's healing journey is going to look different, right? Like some people are going to see amazing results in a month or two months of making a change, whether it's brain retraining or diet or, you know, whatever method of healing. And some people it's going to take a lot longer. So just keeping that in mind and just staying committed to to the idea that you can heal and you can get better. Absolutely. And where, where can we see you going in the future with all this? So you've learned so much through this process. You've suffered just as much as, as anyone I've talked to, you know, you've had some horrible times, but, um, I could see it's, it's brought about a person that is very knowledgeable. That's, um, you know, sort of, living outside the box now you know you're no longer <laughs> confined to that matrix like matrix like world that that many of us are confined to in, in these limited beliefs so i feel like there's so much that people could learn from you um can you see yourself taking this in, in sort of a, an area where maybe you're doing um coaching on dnrs or um something else you have in the works maybe that we're unaware of well um that's a good question. You know, I, I've had a couple of people reach out and ask if I am doing coaching or planning. I'm what I'm trying to get at, Rachel, will you be my coach? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't, at this point in time, at least I don't know that I plan to do coaching, um, but I, I plan to keep sharing as much as I can. I guess I'm hoping that I can reach as many people as possible. And I think maybe doing that in other ways might um, I might be able to like reach more people if I focus on you know just sharing on my blog and YouTube and Instagram um, just going into depth with my journey and I'm kind of at the point where like I'm so just trying to focus on my own healing and try to make that a priority but I'm so excited about all of these things that I want to share and so I have been sharing but a lot of times I kind of need to like remind myself okay like the most important thing is that I heal and then um then I'll I think eventually I want to write a book about my journey but I'm just not ready to go back to those places that you know I'm just working to heal from and recover from and so you know I would say in a few years maybe that but just con yeah continuing to share I'm I may change my mind about coaching in the future I don't know I guess just wherever I feel like God leads me to go. That's where I'll go. But I, I don't plan to go back to a nine to five job at all. I don't, I don't plan on that. Um, and I just hope that I can in some way, like make this sort of a, a career to be, yeah. Encouraging well, others with chronic illness. So. Yeah. I think you're, you're still in that place of healing. Right. And I think that you know, you're not quite on the other side yet where maybe you feel comfortable, to, you know, going. Yeah, I'm still trying to, I'm still just trying to continue to learn. And I, I feel like I've gotten to the point where I can now start to process the information better. And I'm not just like totally brain fog, like don't remember anything. And so even like for this podcast, I just felt like, oh, I hope I can convey something of value and that, you know, so I just want to make sure I'm learning things as as best as i possibly can before sharing them but yeah. yeah yeah well i think that your your story is like incredibly important to have out there and you're such a such a great voice to have out there and um you know you're you're one of the few people i listen to that like you know i i i think you know i have a lot of faults myself like i said it before the interview but um but I think one of my big, greatest strengths is I could tell somebody who, you know, is, is genuine and um, really just out there to trying to help people. And, 
And uh, that's why I love your channel so much. I, I really yeah. love your videos and I feel like I learn a lot from you and I, I'm so grateful that you came on today. Um, I'm gonna link your inf information down below. Rachel has an awesome YouTube channel, guys. You guys really need to check that out. She's also a lot of fun to follow on Instagram. So I highly recommend checking that out as well. Uh, is there anything else we should be sharing with people? I don't think so. I think that's it. Thank you so much for having me on and for everything you you just said. I appreciate that. Yeah. Well, um, I'm hoping to, to perhaps have you on again, maybe in a few months. Maybe we could just do an update every few months and, yeah. and you know, we could keep track of your progress and everything. And Perfect. Let's do good. it. All right, Rachel. Okay. Well, thanks again so much for coming on and uh, hopefully talk to you again soon. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Okay. Bye.